This is very key. Amel fuses. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank you. You so kind. <laughs> Amel, listen to this. Amel, which is what? Melanin. Amel. Do you know that the word for melanin in, in, in Zoroastrianism, which is coming out of um, Zoroastrianism is Persian, which is coming out of Iraq and Iran. The word for melanin in Zoroastrianism is called drug. Where so you get the word drug from. Now, Amel bites a costume and goes what fuses into her bloodstream, thus making the first vampire. And makes her immortal. Amel is this in energy or this entity that fuses into her bloodstream, this black substance that makes her the first vampire. And that's her name is called Akasha. Now, going back, Crawley in his book of thought, the only time they ever mention anything on the ear in all these metaphysical books is Crawley's book of thought. In that chapter of Hoppercrotts or the food, he says that the Harvest Lock is talking about a doorway or talking about something in the inner ear. It's called the Bararandra Chakra, which is the most highest vehicle of Akasha spirit. All right, now follow me here. So we know that one of the keys here is the ear. Hell, the ear is the only thing that's as close to the damn pineal land. I said, that's why they never put it in none of these metaphysical books. Now, follow me on this. Now, this has to do with me and what happened to me in January. Met up with two sisters, medical nurse. They've been coming to my lecture for years. They work at Grady Memorial Hospital, which is like the butcher place down there. They haven't seen everything that happened. You go to Grady, man, you can get a thousand horror stories. So these is the, they say, but when you get in a wreck down there now, they say, you want to go to Grady. Because they ain't so used to trauma. So you got a better chance of living by going where they be patching up niggas every month. And every week, every night. And you know what I'm saying? They going way out with the white folks and they sitting there and you bleeding to death. They don't know what to do. You see, this is every night for them. So I said, damn, y'all grady nurses. Y'all motherfucker, get it, pig nurses. Y'all have seen everything. So these sisters came in. The sister, she tell me, I want a candle out your ear. I know what ear candling is. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, I want a candle out your ear. I said, okay. So... She started counting out me here. She said, well, you know, we had a guy that was deaf. And we counted, we, we, we did five candles before we got him to, uh, to here. Well, I said, I'm not deaf in the ear, but I say, I, st it, I say, this ear here, my right ear, which is called the left, if you're on the inside of the body, this would be the left ear. It's called the left hand path. I said, this ear, I can hear, I can hear, but I say, it's all, it, it's, you, know, I, you know when your ears stop, it's just always just no noise your ass. I said, so she started counting out my ear. She got up to four, she got up to five. She said, well, hell, the person that was deaf had five. I said, well, I can hear. She counted out like five candles in the ear, and all of a sudden I realized something. My ear had been stopped up since the first part of January of 2001. It was stopped up to I couldn't hardly stand it, and I got some little ear shit and got it so I could, you know, to tolerate it. But I didn't realize that when they came out my ear, I had developed sonic hearing. I did not develop sonic hearing. Now I'll say this again, Dawood made fun of this thing here, but I'm but it's all but see when you see the thing about it is when you do the scholarship. And that's what, you see, I tell people it's good to give people scholarship and put them on the road to scholarship and put them on the road to these books because every now and then, those same people will go back and study and they'll come back and bring you shit. So it's interesting because I knew what was going on spiritually. Yeah, I knew what was going on spiritually. You know, I'm, okay, okay, hold on, one minute. Hold on now. Hold on, because this is very important. All right. January of 2000, my stomach in a week got bigger and bigger. And by the end of the week, I had a little something in there kicking. It was like a little baby. And I said, God damn it, I must be pregnant. I said, it's not funny, you know. I said, I must be pregnant. Now it's interesting. It's always you gotta get scholarship. Because it's interesting because the same sister from Tallahassee that graduated from FAMU. Her boyfriend 
studying, uh, got a lot of information I was given and started studying, and he found all kind of texts in India on how a male can get pregnant, but it's a spiritual pregnancy. And the part of Buddhism with the gut, it's a spiritual pregnancy. And so he found that, I said, always get a scholarship, because every now and then a motherfucker gonna read something, and they can bring, come back and help you. <laughs> We're talking about being students in this thing. So the brother said, hey man, I heard you on the tape talking about you was pregnant. He said, I got some texts coming out of India where they talk about the Buddha gut and a person can be very spiritually pregnant. I said, yeah, because this, this, this shit in me was kicking like a baby. And then one of the psychics said, say, that baby going to be born on a certain day. And it matured like in two weeks. But it, now what is it? It's nothing but your soul. You have a soul that's dormant. When you have the scarab, with no wings on it, you ever see a scarab? That means your soul is asleep. You ever heard of the sleeping Buddha? Your soul is asleep. Whenever your soul wakes up, it goes through the same birthing process as a baby being born. That's why your soul is also called the baby of the egg. Hoppercrops. Okay? Your soul is called the baby of the egg. Hoppercrops. So I got pregnant about two weeks after he was born, this ear got stopped up. It was like something or some type of entity didn't want this ear to get stopped up, the, uh, to hear. Anyway, one, a year later, once I got the ear unplugged in January, I found out I developed sonic hearing. I could hear the cells in my damn feet. I could hear my heartbeat. I could hear all kind of little shit walking around in my body, all kind of little shit popping. OK. Now, now, y'all have to throw me off on this one, because I got to tell you, this is the crux of the story. You can't present nothing and don't give the people what happened. So now, you're just going to have to just bear with me on this one. Listen. Okay. Once she cleaned out my ear and I developed this sound of hearing, I became obsessed with music. Now, I got 5,000 albums in my house. So I got this system. I just came with an app. I had one system lasting me from 1989 to November of 2001. And it finally blew. Well, okay, Anki was the best I had. Now look. So I went and got this Kenwood receiver. Now this goes down to the science of what's going on. I put in this Kenwood receiver. I became obsessed with music. I put fucking 14 speakers. I put 12, I put, I put 10 speakers in the, in, in the room. Big speakers. I put 11 in the room, and I put 14. I shouldn't have done that, because that just blew my little shit right up. <laughs> now, but I was obsessed. <laughs> now, then the odyssey starts. Then the adventure starts. So, I got a significant other here, the sister here, with the, right here in, in the second row. I call her up. Now, you know this is a black man priorities. You know, because, you know, like I told you, I'm the brokest man in the Western Hemisphere. So, you know, <laughs> only money I got is if I got it in my front pocket. No nothing. So I call the sister and I say, now, you know this is a black man and his priorities. Damn rent, damn lights, damn food. My levels and my music is gone. And you're talking about a black man with a priority. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, I got this thing in my ear, and I'm obsessed. I said, my music is gone. So the sister said, don't worry about it. I'm going to hook you up and send you. I said, I said, you came into my life right at the right damn time to fund this damn ridiculous odyssey. So I said, I don't know. Um, I said, my music gone. And I said, you know, damn rent, damn all that. You know how black men people are. It's about the radio. <laughs> so she came. She wired me some doggone money. Now, I go to pick up me a system. One brother said, man, you got enough money. Let's go to Circuit City, man. Get you something new. I go to Circuit City. I buy a system. Um, take it home. It don't have no outlet for phono, which is the turntable. Mm -hmm. I take it back and get an outlet for phono. Take it home. It don't have an outlet for tape two monitor. And tape two monitors where you hook up your equalizer. I said, wait a minute, hold on. I said, damn, I searched in there. Uh, 
I can't find nothing that's brand new with these options. They have taken them off. The guy said, yeah, well, they, he said, they're going to yeah, take that off. Then I said, damn, you can't hook up no um, equalizer. He said, well, they got one last equalizer that Techniques put out. Now, this is, let me show you what, what time it is. This has a lot, this has everything to do with melanin. He said, they got one equalizer that Techniques put out. And he said, after this year, they're going to take that off the market. I said, okay, then. I see now that the pawn shops is going to be my best friend on this one. All right. So it take me about a week to get some, some stuff. So this is what happened. I find a Sony receiver. <laughs> it's like a 99. It's got phono and it's got take two. Let me show you the science on this. It's got phono and it's got take two. I plug it up, plug in the double um, on an equalizer. I got 14 speakers I got to push now, shit. <laughs> so, I plug in the equalizer, and my music sounds funny. Come to find out what it is is this. The new systems, everything that they want you to hear is already preset. So, it don't matter what, what equipment you get, it's still going to come out with a preset sound because the key here is, in the new receivers, is, and, what, and let me tell you what CD technology is. It's a hologram made for not to enter the inner ear melanin. Now, I want you to hear what I'm saying here. Since 1990, you've been hearing music, but not necessarily hearing music. Talking to some white boy, to work at this music place, guy in his 50s, he said, man, he said, when the CD came out, he said, I went and took all my damn Miles Davis albums and brought them into this store to sell them, because they, they, they sell the LU's LPs. He said, I went out and I got a whole Miles Davis collection on CD. I'm going to show you how you're going to get around all this in a few minutes. On CD. He said, he said, wait, something ain't right. Something's not right. There's something missing. And he went and he read in, 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 in one of the CD packs that said that we have taken out several octaves that used to be in the original music. So because it's an eq sound and it's a hologram, you hear music, but you don't really hear music. My other white guy kept saying, you know, I have to keep turning the CD up. He said, something about the digital, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get. Now. Since 1990, since they phased out the LPs, they have designed the CDs so that it goes in the ear and you can hear music, but you're not hearing music. It does not reach the inner ear melanin. Okay. Found out if you got a graphic equalizer and you can put your hands on several levels, levels you can still override the damn CDs. So they got to phase out the equalizer. Now for the people that's going to all CD technology, I'm just trying to say, now first thing you need to do, first thing, this is for the melanin people. Uh, go out, go to some pawn shop and go something, to find you some turntables, snatch them up. Because when the turntables went out in 1990, you can get turntables at pawn shops and at Goodwill stores for $2. Only thing you had to do was find a needle. And some of them, you just go and buy a new cartridge. And so they sell an Audio Techniques cartridge right ready to go in Circuit City. Now this is the key. Whatever you do, go out and buy you a real good turntable. Don't get nothing cheap. Because you can find the real deal turntables. Now, and that's for one thing. Another thing here is if you got CDs, because you've got to go buy albums, Go get you, anytime you find your graphic equalizer in these pawn shops or whatever, buy the graphic equalizer. Now, the key here is, I found out something. Now I have now, because the sister died, by the help of the sister, there's, there is the domestic model, Sony, Pioneer, uh, Kenwood, you see what I'm saying, Kenwood, uh, those are your domestic models. Then you got what is called high-end stuff. Remember how? I remember this in. I remember this in the '70s. 
the 70s, people used to go into armor. They said, we go over the armor, we get some stereo. We get stereo systems we can't find in the United States. Remember now, they didn't phase out the LPs in, in 1990. They tried to do that shit in, in Europe. The Europeans said, we ain't buying that shit. So they had to still buy, get LPs. 